Hi everyone, my name is Leandro and today I want to show you Quickshow. Quickshow is a Google Workspace add-on that runs on the sidebar of Gmail and lets you save email from Gmail to Notion. Let me open the add-on, you can see the, the icon in here. Once we click we have some information. Uh, I will leave you the, the link to install the add-on in the description of the video. But basically Quickshow allows you to save your emails to Notion. You can map the email information to the different properties of your database. You can save the email body as a column or as the content of a page. You can set default values to any of your database properties. You don't need to forward your emails to anyone. It goes from Gmail directly to Notion. Your attachments are saved to Google Drive uh, in a specific folder called Quickshow, and then you can also share that folder with other team members. That way anyone can access the attachments from Notion and you will be able to save the emails with just one click. So the first thing I want to do is connect my Notion workspace. I will select Notion. Right now, Notion is the only one that is supported, but in the future, Airtable and Coda will be as well. I already have a contacts page and emails and contacts database selected. I will allow the access. And now I have my Notion workspace connected. Awesome. So you can see here, I have an email database. Right now it's empty. I have different properties, subject, URL, body, email, date, labels, files and media, status and contacts. So this email database is related to a contacts database. And I will show you how, how we can automatically save those contacts in that database as well, once we, we save the emails. So the first thing we're gonna do is to create an action. This basically we can have as many actions as we want. We can have some action that save emails to a task database, to a information, to a read later. That's the good thing about Quickshow. You can have different actions with different configurations to different databases. So I will change the name here. We say save to emails. We can select the color that we want for the bottom. In this case, I will select this dark salmon and you will see a preview of the of the color in there. We will select the integration I already connected, the Notion workspace. And the next step is going to select the database. So if I go in here, I have the two databases. We are going to save the emails to the emails and contacts database. Cool. So now it's time to create the mappings. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to map the information from the email to the different properties that I have in my database already created. So for example, we want the URL of the email to be saved to the URL column in my database. And we will basically do all these mappings. It takes some time because basically reads all the information in place from your Notion database. Let's do also, for example, Let's do subject as well. Uh, and we're going to save that to the subject of the email. These are the other options that you have. You can save the sender name, the sender email, the recipient emails, the CC and the BCC. And we also can set a default value. Uh, I will show you that in another video. So let's go with the subject of the email. We have URL, we have the subject, and let's save the body of the email to the page content. The good thing about this, once you define your actions, I will show you later that you can also, if you want, duplicate the actions. So for example, you can create a verbum of the action and then just duplicate it multiple times and then just edit and add or remove different properties. And uh, let's do one more. Let's do also attachments. In files and media, we're gonna save the attachments. Uh, awesome, we have our action ready. So we will finish creating the action. Awesome, so we see we have one action. Now, what I'm gonna do while I have the add-on open is to open one of my emails. So let's say daily data, we'll open the email, 
we see, let me just maybe resize a little bit this one. Yeah, there you go. So you can see everything. We are in a trial. Uh, and we have here the action that we just defined. We can see the subject and a preview of the content of the email. Now we're going to click set to email. Let's see how this goes. So the add-on will try to to keep the the format of the email as much as possible, including images and links. The only problem is that sometimes images are are in the email display with weird URLs that Notion doesn't support in the API at least. So in that in those cases, you may just see the link to the image instead of the image display. So we can see we have the subject, we have the URL to access the email, and we also set, well, this one, there's no attachment. So if we open the, the page, we can see the content in here. So as you can see, this was is corresponds to the daily dad image. And we can see all the content, we have the links, we can click on any of those, and we can read it when we want. We even have the, the unsubscribe. Uh, let's try with another one. Let's go, for example, with one with attachments. This one, I bought a trackball module and key cluster for my ultimate hacking keyword. I have an invoice in here. So let's save that as well. And let's see. This one, as you see, is with a, a table. There are a couple of images in there, order number. The good thing also is that you can save the, the content in the body property here in the database instead of in the content of the page. And that way you can play with Notion formulas to extract in specific information from the email. But let's open this email. Let's see. We have the invoice. Order number with a click the link to the delivery status. We have one of the images and the information. And now let's check the attachments. There you go. If we go to files and media, we can see our attachment. We can even open it. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. And it works just fine. Now let's try with another one. Uh, maybe more to that. Yeah. More to that, hey friends, we have some images, links, quotes. Let's try to save this one now. It will depend how long it takes to save the email on the content. So if it's a short email, it's gonna be super quick. If it has a lot of different type of blocks, images and everything, it's gonna take a little bit more. So we have the email saved and if we go, we have the, all the information. So we have the we have the image, we have all the content. You see that everything is also using different H1, H2, H3. We have the different styles and the links. That's awesome. Now let me show you another feature that the add-on has, and is basically be able to also save contacts at the same time as you save your emails. And that works with contacts mapping. This is super simple. The only thing that you have to do is to select the database that you want to use and which property to use for the email and which property to use for the name. I will select the contacts database that I mentioned previously. Uh, we will also change the name instead of customer. So contacts instead of customer, let's call it just contacts. And where do we want to save your contacts name? So we want to save that in the name property that we have in the database. And for the email, we will want to save that in the email property. Today is not my day with my internet. Okay, email. So once we have that ready, we, we can create the mapping and I will show you how you add that into your existing action. Awesome, so we have the contact mapping ready. Now we go to edit my action. By the way, once you have 
multiple actions created, you will be able to reorder the actions so they are in the order that you want, and you will be able to also duplicate actions. If you click in the action, you can edit it. You can see the usage in here, how many times you use the action to save emails. And I will now, I will now add the mappings to automatically save contacts. So we're going to select the contacts relation property. I will show you in here. We have a relation property to the contacts database. And for this one, we have different options. One of the options that we have is to set a default value. In that way, you can use the page ID to directly save uh, a related database page as a relation, or you can use the contacts mapping. If we use the contacts mapping, you can you you now will be able to select which mapping you want to use. Contacts, the one that we created in the previous step. Cool. That's ready. Let's save the action. And now it's time to try this one out. Let's open a different email. Uh, let's go with floating topics. So every time you click on an email, uh, you uh, know, uh, Quickshop will basically render this actions option and you will be able to save it. One thing to note is that Quickshop only has access to the emails that you open while you have the add-on open. So apart from that, the, the add-on is not able to read your emails at all. Uh, unless you have it open. Let's save the email. This one is big. We have Tofu Cat Litter, Magnetic Power Bank, YouTube Automation, what's next? And Silicon Scar Tape. Okay, so the email has been saved. We can see the subject, the link, as we mentioned before. And look at this. We have now exploding topics created as a contact in our database. So let's take a look. Contacts, exploding topics, we have the name, we have the email address, and we have the emails. So that way, if we are saving emails from different people at the same in the same database, we will be able to see the information all in a single place. I think that's pretty awesome. I hope you like this quick showcase of Quickshop. And in next videos, I will be showing some additional options for actions, how to duplicate them, how to reorder them, and everything you can do with Quickshop. Cheers.